the dance. Long reach of the arm, bone in its case, rack of bones. Long bones in the arm, long bones in the leg, the tibula, the fibula. Lift them out of the crate they've slept their life in. Let them out, let them scrape themselves raw, let them. Play, let them fiddle and bow, let them dance once they've left the past they have been creased or cast in. Let them go a little, if only for a moment they would enter in skim and scud, all the bones jingling in the flesh. The bones jingling, the leg bones keeping time, hip bones too, the ulna, the radius circle carrying you through. Tip, step, do not stop. Writing poetry is almost outlawed activity, not only in, in the indifference that it gets, but even the hostility and resistance in some ways. This is not proper or not quite acceptable or, or uh, um, consumable or whatever. Uh, poetry uh, among the among genres compared to post fiction is often seen as a kind of uh, small appearance and, and in a kind of embarrassed way in the, on, the, on those dusty shelves over there and the, the real books are over here but it tends to be certainly marginalized and, and seen as lesser in various ways. Not necessarily lesser in accomplishment, but lesser in, in attention or response. You're beginning already with probably a smaller audience and a smaller um, attuned audience. The audiences are much better able to follow you with prose fiction, partly because in some ways, I probably make enemies of every prose fiction writer in the country when I say this. Prose fiction is, is looser. There's more filler in prose fiction. Some of it can become close to automatic writing. You know, you fill in the pages and then she went down there to the fourth corner. And, uh, whereas in poetry, you pack it. You must not think you are on the dark side of darkness. You must not think it is not a little lonely there. You don't hold people's hands particularly. You say, here it is, and this is going to work you hard. And many people get alarmed and afraid, saying, I can't understand this. I'm not going near this. And so there's a kind of fear that builds up uh, that I think is very real and understandable that people, are, many people are anxious, saying, I won't understand this. So that's one of the concerns. Uh, 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 are, are folks going to be able to connect with this, given how much you're asking of them? But at the same time, uh, uh, I'm perverse enough, and I suppose almost every poet is, saying, I want to ask something of you. I want to ask quite a bit of you. In my case, I'm saying, I'm going to work you hard. The world of books, the world of uh, words, uh, cover a whole lot of uh, terrain. I mean, a lot of it's for entertainment, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I, I have not only not opposed it, I think it's a good thing. But where I balk is when we confuse, rather conveniently, entertainment uh, in writing, diversion in writing, and uh, uh, writing that invests something in this as a demanding activity where we're prepared as reader and writer to bring our best selves our intelligence, our patience, our humility, our curiosity, our willingness to discover or be surprised or challenged, to be our best selves in many ways, I culturally and intellectually. And that stuff doesn't sell as a rule, and certainly not immediately. It's hard for uh, the world to make its way through that kind of tangle of commercialism, valuing only what immediately sells or has a, a kind of immediate demand. Art can speak, I think, to what in us we know but haven't realized. The argument, I suppose, in its bullets would say that art can, can transform us and bring us to uh, 
larger or, or more satisfactory understandings or appreciations. I read at the bookstore uh, the other night the uh, epigraph from Shelley who says, uh, art lifts the veil of familiarity from the world. So we can see what is hidden and obscured. That would be one version of argument too. Maybe we can see and experience things that for want of habit or patience or time or energy uh, uh, or distracted and busy lives or whatever, we hadn't really attended to or really hadn't landed with us in ways that might happen tomorrow. Say, ah, yes, or yeah, that's the phrase, that's, that's it. It is love binds us to the humpback moon when it sprays and blinds us to its constant strain, who, tiring of our romance, is sliding away one and one half inches in a year and a day one day will roll off like a lumpy rock and abandon us. It stays flighty and impecunious, a penumbra, and what of you I remember. What was I doing in, in Gibbous Moon? Uh, uh, probably a lot of things I didn't even understand or realize. I, in fact, that's part of writing, that even if you're very aware and experienced and uh, in ways deliberate or knowing in your writing, you do things or things happen that you didn't understand or realize or predict. Uh, and that's kind of wonderful in many ways. So what happened is that Michael produced these uh, images and I tried to find poems, write poems, revise poems, position poems that might reply in some ways to the whole uh, collection of these images that I find exhilarating really. I was almost almost breathless with excitement. It sounds silly. I find myself feeling silly saying that. But I was almost breathless with wonder about uh, with those images. So I was trying to find something that would be kind of in consonance keep, uh, with, uh, with that, that sense, a kind of tenor that seemed right that this uh, way maybe fit somehow with what he was doing. But a good part of it is saying the world is filled with loss and pain uh, and, and uncertainty and yearning. But inside that also there is uh, there's beauty and there's exhilaration, there's love. Speaking of, uh, of a kind of uh, human uh, stress, uh, stress and celebration in a, in a world that in many ways seems much larger than us uh, and perhaps frightening but also uh, uh, astonishingly beautiful.